Just like that time when it got weird between Mulder and Scully. You can't quit now, Scully. I can, Mulder. This is Luke and Lewis on Triple M Modern Digital. Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Welcome to the show. We just finished our first week, Luke, and Great we're back Great to be back more. on a Monday. Yes. Got them Monday blues. Is, do nah, we? I'm actually enjoying it today. I woke up. Uh, Pr- thunderstorms pretty... this morning, actually, in my area. Oh, out really? in the bush. Oh. Uh, <laughs> was there any bushfires? I don't, I don't know. I think someone was just banging a tin roof. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You probably just saw electricity for the first time. Yeah. Like, oh, what's happening? Yeah, true. <laughs> now, uh, we've got a good, uh, we've got a sh- good show planned for you guys. Uh, Luke has... Has uh, quite a few problems with restaurants that we've been to recently, and uh, it's time to talk about it. You I'm going to dispute it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lewis, I believe you're going to be taking down a big corporation in another expose. Yes, Bunnings as is, was uh, still reeling from your uh, yes. you exposing them last week about their slogan. I saw Bunnings share prices have uh, plummeted to the bottom. Absolutely. Now. Who's next? Can you well, say? Look, I'm not going to reveal it. We will find out at the end of uh, at, when the segment comes, when the time comes. <laughs> Will I, will, I, will, <laughs> I hope I hope so. <laughs> but I will say, look, I don't I don't want to give any heads up because I could crash the whole economy, really. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say this that uh, I'm not loving it, Luke. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be right back after this. This is Luca Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Speaking of lunch, Luke. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very you... good segue. Segue of the year, everyone. <laughs> yes, until my next segue, because I always outdo myself. <laughs> <laughs> Always strive to be better, everyone listening. That's just a... <laughs> that's the main theme of this show, other than lunch. Now, <laughs> let's talk lunch. Um, so you have, uh, I've noticed going, we get food together quite a lot. Yes. Uh, too much, really, when you mm. think about it, and, and, and too many times. Because you eat so slowly. Yeah, I do. It's yeah. a massive waste of my time going to get food with you. Yeah, I don't know why you do it. You yeah. could, you're, you're basically just accelerating I your I feel aging. like I eat six meals a day if I have three with you. <laughs> yeah, I do take ages. but I'm look- hungry by the time you're finished. <laughs> like I'm ready to move on to the next meal. Yeah, but here's the thing with you is ordering uh, at restaurants or even picking which one to go to is always a chore with you, especially recently. Uh, we went to a Japanese restaurant, and you fought me on even returning there. Mate, you're lucky I even walked in. That, you know, that's very exotic for me. <laughs> like, if it's not like, it doesn't have, you know, like a, a main franchise, I'm usually not entering. Yeah, initially, before we even started going to this place, it took me yeah. about two weeks to convince you that you you wouldn't going to die. You're speaking to a guy who owns a Subway loyalty card. I don't know what you expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we go to this Japanese restaurant and Luke picks the widest thing there, which is like teriyaki don. No, I like the the chicken curry don only because it's a mild curry, but I did yeah. ensure that. I asked her about four times. Yeah, chicken curry don yeah. is, is what you get. But recently we went there one time and you ordered not the curry. You wanted the curry, but you ordered... <laughs> What did you order? I ordered chicken teriyaki don, but I wanted chicken curry don. It's the same thing. It's spicy chicken it's, with rice. It's definitely not because teriyaki is not spicy. <laughs> well, I, f- I find it pretty spicy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, you ordered the wrong thing and then you got what you asked for. Because they didn't know yeah, what they you gave meant. me chicken teriyaki, and I was like, I wanted chicken curry don. Well, you should have ordered that. Yeah, as if they didn't know what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> and then we couldn't go back there because you refused to go there because you're like, oh, that restaurant sucks. You never get what you want. Yeah, you they, only get what you uh, ask for. Yeah, they got my order wrong. They should know. <laughs> Look at me. Do I look like I want a chicken teriyaki don? Actually, I probably do. <laughs> yeah, I probably do. That's the second widest thing on the menu. Yeah. But uh, then, this is an issue that keeps coming into our lives. Uh, while I was in your area, in the mm-hmm. country, uh, I, f- I managed to find the only restaurant that didn't look like it was just a bush tucker place. <laughs> yeah. And- <laughs> And then so I said, oh, we should go in there. It looks like a normal cafe. And you went, no, we shouldn't. Why don't you like that restaurant? <laughs> Because it had a bad dance floor. <laughs> when? I went to it. So it's a bar slash cafe. Yeah. And at night they have like parties and during the day it's a cafe. They move yeah. all the tables out and it becomes a bar. So you had been there place. at night. I'd been there for a party, a 21st. Yeah. And um, was not a fan of their dance floor. Too slippery, a bit of carpet, not, not a good dance environment. So why would I go back there? I'm not supporting that business. Okay, Luke, <laughs> just a quick question. Yeah. When we, were, when we were there in the morning, was there a dance floor set up? No. <laughs> Were we planning on dancing? Well, I wasn't planning on dancing. I just resented them for having the, you know, okay, what about we're halfway through an Ed's Benedict and I want to chuck a nut push or a Macarena? <laughs> and 
what's going to happen then? I'll be like, oh, let's not push. Oh, wait, this dance floor sucks. Let's leave. Like, <laughs> You know what? You make a great point. Yeah. We'll never go back there again. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Luke, the time has come for my <sighs> favorite segment. I'm, I'm beginning to quite enjoy it as well. So, yes, yes. <laughs> but it's time for, to come for you to lay down a wrath of truth. Yes. Uh, upon, you like, you like targeting businesses. Yes. And today you're going, you're going straight to the top, aren't you? Yes. I'm not messing around. I mean, uh, last week I took down Bunnings. Very um, big corporation. Can I just quickly say rest in peace to Bunnings? Yeah. No one's shopping there anymore. Everyone wishes Masters was back. But uh, yeah, I was going to say Masters, <laughs> happy new beginning. So <laughs> well, you're welcome. Um, yes. But today you're going straight to the top. Who are you targeting today, Lewis? Well, today. I'm targeting McDonald's, okay? And I also have my own intro. Michael, can you please Businesses play? exposed. Ah, you've been a naughty business. <laughs> Lewis had a lot of time before the show, to yes. apparently. Okay, I spent a lot of time on that. That's probably probably some of my best work, mm. not including what I'm about to I'm say. Hoping the, I'm hoping the... I was going to say, I hope this, this segment's a little better than the intro. Yes, it will. I'm about to blow the listeners' minds, yeah. okay? So, you know that uh, McDonald's recently started their Monopoly uh, game again. Yeah. If you don't know what that is, basically... Okay, a little bit early with the suspense music, Michael. I will... <laughs> I was going to tell you to play that, but you know what? Start playing it. Let's just play it for the entire three minutes, and then we'll get sick of it, all right? <laughs> yes, that's very good. Okay, as you would know. <laughs> uh, McDonald's uh, brings hey, Wait, a... is this supposed to make me care more about what you're saying? Look, this music? it was supposed to make you care a little bit later in the segment, okay. I will be honest. But uh, you have heard of these tell Monopoly me. games. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah you, where you rip the little sticker off and you win like a small prize. Or... Yes. Is there a big prize, like a jackpot? Well, that's what... Uh, there's like... You can win things like a car, but no, I've never heard of anyone winning a car. Can we turn this music <laughs> off? It's really distracting. <laughs> I've never heard of anyone winning a car or winning any kind of the big prizes. I don't think anyone can win them. I've never seen it ever. You can win a lot of things. Like, I've won a free small chips. Yeah, I've got small fries as well. Yeah, um, which is not a prize. I've also got to uh, mix some. <laughs> 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 a mix mix something. Rap. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's all the same. Not good enough for a prize. But that's not I what didn't I'm... go collect it. That's how much that's how unenthused yeah. I was about getting it. Often I'll get a I little just, but I still went, oh cool. Small fries. Never went and got my small fries, but I was happy I won something. Yeah, that is good. But you just put it in the bin. That's yeah. where most surprises go, I reckon, just in the bin. Um but that's not what I'm here to expose. I'm here to say, ladies and gentlemen, that every time McDonald's runs their monopoly campaign, they raise their prices oh my god i'm so exposed <laughs> you got him i did they've wait, been exposed wait. so you're saying as a distraction yes. they run the monopoly a campaign yes. to then distract you from the fact that they're in the meantime they're just raising their prices and no one notices yes let me tell you some hash brown stats yeah go <laughs> Uh, I, I win the first game. Before the first game, hash browns used to cost $1 each. Hungry yeah. Jacks, they're still a dollar each to this day, all right? But then, after the first game, they raised their prices of hashtag of hashtags, <laughs> of hash browns to $1.95. They did not. <laughs> Michael, hit the button again. $1.95, <laughs> everyone. Oh, my God, I'm so exposed. Okay, but now, all right, now the new Monopoly campaign, the price of hash browns has been raised to $2.20. Hit 30 it again. cents. So oh every God, time I'm you so pass go, <laughs> so every time you pass go, they just charge you an extra 200 bucks for hash browns. It's ridiculous. You don't it's... collect money, it keeps going up. The Monopoly game is a distraction. It's a bigger cover-up than the moon landing. And Lewis is putting on his little Monopoly top hat and he's leaving because he's just <laughs> absolutely got them. Take that, McDonald's. I'm only shopping at Hungry Jack's for now. Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Luke, have you uh, been paying attention to this Rick and Morty show? I know. I'm familiar with the show. Yeah. Not it's... a f- big fan, but I'm familiar with more the fan base, actually. Yeah. It's one of those. Like, I like the show, but I don't like the fan base. It's one of those things. Like, it's just the fan base is getting out yeah. of control. For those who don't know, it's like an adult cartoon, from my understanding. Yeah. It's an adult cartoon. It's like a science fiction. It's kind of a parody of Back to the Future, and the fan base on this thing is absolutely ridiculous. Um, now, in a recent episode in like season two, the main character of Rick and Morty kept going on about this old promotional dipping sauce that McDonald's uh, released in like 1988 yeah. 
to promote the Mulan Disney movie. That's a throwback. So that- it's about as obscure as you can get. And yeah. there was a whole episode that was just around getting this source to come back. Yeah. And the fan base latched onto this idea, and so did the creator. Like, to the point where I'm pretty sure this whole source thing was just the creator abusing his platform yeah. of having a massive mainstream he, he cartoon. He personally wanted this source back in rotation yeah. on the McDonald's menu. Yeah. And then he, used he was like, let's... A million dollar cartoon to <laughs> <Yeah>. get it on. <laughs> genius. <laughs> I know. It's, it's absolutely genius. I mean, that's what that's what I'm going to do with this show if we ever move off Triple M on a digital. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to try and bring back Mashies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so they they really latched onto this idea, and McDonald's actually got behind it, and they sent the creator a bottle of the sauce, and then the fans were said, "Well, no, this isn't enough. We want the sauce as well." And what's the sauce? It's just a dipping sauce. Called- I think we have a grab from Rick and Morty where the character explains what the sauce is. In, in 1998, they had this promotion for the Disney film Mulan, where they where they. They, they created a new sauce for the McNuggets called Szechuan sauce, and it's delicious. And they got rid of it, and now it's gone. Does so that it's answer Szechuan your question? sauce? Szechuan, Szechuan sauce. sauce. Yeah. Have you done a bit of research there about the sauce? Ah, uh, I just no. I'm just I, I don't know. No, I don't know what it is. I don't know anything about anything exotic. You were struggling before this to spell it. It looks <laughs> like hot chili sauce for those. It looks like pasta sauce. Actually, yeah, it's just McNugget sauce. Yeah, yeah, it does really look like that. But basically, what it is um, is what McDonald's decided to do is they got behind this massive thing because it was so huge, and they decided to release a limited amount of Szechuan sauce packets to McDonald's. So they poorly distributed this sauce, but they, it's back. And it, yeah, but there's but in nowhere. Near Near the amount that people wanted. Way more demand. Oh, yeah. Like, product. there was the point where people were lining up. It just happened today in America. People were lining up outside McDonald's to get to a To get a sauce. sauce. <laughs> yeah. Which is more embarrassing than lining and up to... And you don't to... think humans can sink any lower. <laughs> and then they line up for hours for Szechuan dipping sauce. <laughs> yes, but wait for this. Because they watched a cartoon. Yes. That, people are very influential. But it gets even lower than this, Luke. You thought that was low. Uh, they ran out of sauce. There wasn't enough for the amount of people that were there. And uh, riots but, Yeah, happened. because if you're the head of... McDonald's, you're going like, I've never heard of this cartoon. Yeah. What is Szechuan dipping sauce? <laughs> this was not popular when we tried it in the 90s because like, no one really... No one I'd, went this nuts for Mulan. Yeah, Why no, would they go for the nuts for the I don't sauce think, now? I don't reckon Mulan fans were starting riots <laughs> going, give us our sauce back. Yeah, but that's what happened. So this is what happened when people found out that there wasn't enough sauce. We have like audio from a McDonald's. Play it, Michael. We want this is people chanting, we want sauce. And there's like a hundred people outside. They should have been Macca's. more specific because they're going to just hand over tartare or tomato or a barbecue, <laughs> and they'll be like, "We want." Oh, this is not the sauce we want. <laughs> <laughs> it got to the point where the police had to be called, riot police, to move the people on. Did they get big sauce guns and spray around? <laughs> it's like, there's your sauce, mate. <laughs> that would have been a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Luca Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Now, Lewis, yes. uh, how long do you reckon it took me to get home from work the other night? Home from work? Well, I would say three days, considering how far away you live. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> how long does it normally take just you? Like, I really ask for that. Yeah. <laughs> I threw you the perfect pitch, and you just hit it out of the park. <laughs> um, yeah, so on, I used to catch public transport home, yeah. right? How long does it normally take? About 45 minutes. Yeah. And it took, it took sure. a lot longer. It took double. Double. Actually, no, it took more. It took an hour and 45 minutes. So Why? it took, uh, there's been replacement buses on oh, my train line. That's the right? worst. Yeah, right? It's very inconvenient. Uh, so it was a tram, then a train, yeah. then on a bus, then the bus was just not going express because it was stopping all stations, which is not direct Buses to my house. Buses are the worst. I would yeah. honestly rather walk yeah. than take a bus. Um, and then uh, on the, and then back on another train. So it's a very long journey. It took yeah. me, yeah, it was a hike. And uh, as compensation for my great inconvenience. You must have got something good. If yeah. So you were delayed by about an hour. An hour. So you probably yeah. got something like an hour. This is a Friday night as well. I was very keen to head home. And oh, this was yeah. at 10 p.m. I can't imagine what so I had a gig after. How many people were hold, held up by this? Uh, there was hundreds. Yeah. yeah. Hundreds. And uh, they were handing out Metro, the Metro employees who yeah. are the uh, public transport providers in Melbourne, uh, were handing out slices of pizza <laughs> on the way off into the bus going, yep, so we're really sorry. 
Uh, hope this slice of margarita gets that hour back. <laughs> margarita? The yeah. disrespect. I know. You could have given me meat lovers or something with a bit of filling. And hang on, how how much pizza? And uh, not even triangle slices, like those square what? ones at like that's, kids' parties. That's just that's abuse. It was disrespectful. That's, and I was like that's not them compensating you, that's spitting on you as well. Like, yeah, have a square piece of pizza, you're To dogs. make the burn even worse, I just eaten a small like a oh, I had a large margarita <laughs> to myself. <laughs> I was really full, and I was like, man, I was almost thinking, like, if I even see another pizza right now, I'll feel sick. And then I walk out of the train, about to get on a bus, already hang myself, and all these people are just getting part. I didn't even get any, because I was like, oh, I'm already too full on pizza. And they just, it's, it was insulting. Maybe you could, you could have put your pizza on, like, lay-by, and you can I pick this up later? Because <laughs> <laughs> ordinarily, you would have been pretty stoked with a margarita pizza. Yeah, it's like later. Your staple but meal. I don't want it, like, cold. Actually, cold pizzas are all right. No, anyway, no. it was just like rubbing salt into the wound. I didn't appreciate it from Metro, but it got me thinking. I was just like, yeah. poor compensation. This isn't the only time this has happened to me. An even worse situation happened on my way back from Fiji. A recent holiday I went on about a mm-hmm. couple of months ago. It's a four and a half hour flight back from Fiji. Mm-hmm. Guess how long that one took? Oh, six? Ten. Ten. Ten hours on the plane as well. Wow. And, uh, That's awful. What did you... So it was delayed. Delayed. And did they give you something for it? Yeah, ten hours on the plane. Uh, and then after about seven hours, the seven hour mark, so already about three hours over the limit. I would want a free, at least 50% of my plane ticket back. Yeah, no. Uh, we got a complimentary choc chip cookie. <laughs> Thanks very much, Fiji Airlines. Much appreciated. Yeah, Here's a great. slice of pizza while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple A Modern Digital. Now, Lewis. Yes. Run update time. Yes, so I'm excited. For those new to the show, uh, Lewis challenged me to a race because I used to be a runner and yep. uh, well, still am. Well, he, he, he still thinks that he's a runner despite the fact that you have not trained for about two months. Three years, but anyway, <laughs> uh, still very confident that I can bet you who's never run. You've never yeah, run in so your life. So the rules are I've never run in my life, but I have 30 days of training rigorously. Uh, and at the end of the 30 days, Luke is not allowed to train and I am going to beat him in a race. Now, I'm assuming we just had two days off the show. Yes. Lots, for lots of time to head out for a run. Nice weather over the weekend as well. Yes. How'd the training go for the weekend? Oh, it went great. On Friday, I went to the gym and I did my weights regime. Yep. And then uh, on the weekend, I had a little run. So so you've been doing a lot of training? Yes, you yes. Can, you can confirm. I can confirm that I have been training very hard to smash you in this race. Not that I'll really need it. Did you have any witnesses to this running? Uh, I, I guess not, no. Mm, okay. Um, I made a call to your girlfriend before the show <laughs> just to check up on your training. Um, let's play the call now. Hello? Hey, go on, Jazz. Um, it's Luke, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Um, I just wanted to call up and um, ask you about Lewis's running over the weekend. I'm, I'm assuming he was training hard because he said he would be every day this month. Oh, I can't say that he did. He didn't. He didn't train over the weekend. <laughs> I'd say the fastest he went was when we went from the car to the bagel shop. <laughs> and did he get a bagel? <laughs> he got two bagels. Was it healthy bagels? Uh tuna on a bagel he's a weird oh that's a stinky a bagel <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. i would say no running i did remind him about running on saturday and he said he was too sore from the first run you know he ran on wednesday like he didn't run the day before either <laughs> he's run well, once he, he was complaining the whole weekend about how sore his legs were he, he's done 600 meters in total <laughs> And he's still yeah. complaining. Now, look, okay. <laughs> Explain yourself. Uh, I'm single now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any ladies listening want to hit me up? I'm looking for a new girlfriend yeah, who if, will be honest about but my running But if you habits. want someone who's really active, don't bother. <laughs> You've had a very stagnant weekend. No, okay. This weekend I haven't run because I actually was that wrecked. My like, I, me and Jazz, we went to the movies and we had a little running race from the cinema to the car park, and I didn't make it. My legs hurt that much. <laughs> so she is being a little bit inaccurate. I ran for about twenty meters before yeah. I had to stop. <laughs> okay, I've been taking this seriously. I yep. had a pizza on Friday. <laughs> I've had donuts today and yesterday, yep. and I think I ate fast food on Saturday. So if you're not going to take this seriously, I'm holding 
setting up my end of the deal. Okay, look, Luke, I'll, you'll be happy to know that I bought some running shoes. Part of the reason why I hadn't didn't run on the weekend is because the shoes that I have, you've seen them. They yeah. are the worst shoes to run in. You told me they weren't that. They were horrible. I said, ah, I'll make it work. I yeah. went for one run and my ankles hurt. They were skate <laughs> shoes with rainbow shoelaces. <laughs> I don't think they're ideal running attire. Well, you'll be happy to know I've bought some shoes and I'm still going to smash you with this race. Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. How's the farm going, Luke? <laughs> well, the chicken... What do you mean farm? I don't live in a farm. Yes, you do. You live in the country, mate. You live in Diamond Creek, okay? Any suburb with a creek in the name, is that's the country. It doesn't mean everyone owns a farm. I do know a couple of people own a farm. <laughs> Okay, so listeners, if you are are unfamiliar with Luke's denial of living in the country, uh, Luke has a problem and he needs to admit it. And today we're going to denial, but I am going to deny everything he's saying. Um, so Luke lives in Diamond Creek, and uh, he thinks that it's not the country, despite the fact that I, every time I go there, I see at least 10 paddocks, many, many windy roads, many hills and valleys, a couple of farms, and once, uh, do you remember uh-huh. when we were driving well, This down- was unlucky, okay. Okay, so we were having an argument about th- th- you not living in the country, you were insisting that, w- that you did not live in the country, and... Uh, what did we get held up by, Luke? So we were pulling out of my uh, driveway and we got held up by a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> so what place does what place has a tractor that is in the country? You never see that in the city. I've never seen a tractor near my house. Mate, all right. <laughs> he's been defeated, ladies and gentlemen, and I can actually prove this. I've actually found uh, so your audio diary, as you what know. Do you mean? Well, as you know, you keep an audio diary on the regular. You have way too much time before the show. <laughs> I need uh, to start getting here earlier. <laughs> well, let's play an excerpt uh, from your audio diary of you talking about living in your suburb. Hi, my name's Luke Kidgel, and welcome to my farm. Down here at dusty old Diamond Creek, it's just a three-day walk to the big city Melbourne, or just two days traveling if you go by horse and cart. My papa says if we work hard on the wheat farm, one day we can get electricity. After that, my mama says Diamond Creek will turn into an economical hub, which is a mighty big word. But until then, it's just a little old quiet country town in the country and definitely not a suburb. Oh boy, here comes Uncle Jim on the Diamond Creek tractor. We ain't got much money around these parts, so we all share the tractor. There's only three farms in Diamond Creek, though, so everybody knows everybody, and we all trust each other. Howdy, Luke. You being good to your mama? Oh, yes, sir, Uncle Jim. Atta boy. Diamond Creek, a friendly country town, and definitely not a suburb. <laughs> Why do I have a southern accent? Because you live in the country, Luke. It's time to admit it. I don't live in Texas. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't live on a ranch. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, look, Luke. Okay, you say that you don't. That you say that you live near. You don't live in the city, all right? Where we are is the city, right? You to get to work, you drive for ten minutes to get to the station. Then you catch a train to the city, where you have to get a tram. And then you get on the train for 20 minutes, then you need to walk to get to work, all right? That's not close. <laughs> it's not close at all. Yes, it's all right. It's not. Whatever. What do you want me to do? Do you just here and defend myself? <laughs> well, look, if you lived around the corner, you wouldn't have to take that much public transport to get here. You no. would just walk to work. No. I'll walk to work. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Yes, I will. People who live around the corner can walk to work. Yeah, okay. So, you, well, okay, if you're going to... You can't walk to work, Luke. You live like six hours I'll away. I'll walk to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> only, no, only... <laughs> wait, wait, this is a big call. Okay, wait. <laughs> only if if I make it... Okay, if I walk to work tomorrow, you have to admit that I just live down the road. I just live All right, right around yeah, the corner. Fine, anyone who can walk to work lives down the road. I'll take you on that. And you but... have to do another audio diary of me living in the city. <laughs> Okay, fine. I'll accept that deal. Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Uh, just before the songs, Luke made a very big call. Uh, because uh, what we'll do is just recap Not really. this quickly. Um, Luke uh, believes that he doesn't live in the country, uh, <laughs> even though he lives uh, about 47 kilometers away. No, I don't. That's the, that's the, I have it on Google, 47 kilometer it's- drive. It's about 30 kilometers oh, if you go in a straight a line. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, 
That's if you take the horse and cart, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, he, he's, he's insisted that he doesn't live in the country, and uh, he made a big call. He said that uh, to prove that he doesn't live in the country, he's going to walk to work. Yeah, just a bit of a walk. Okay. A stroll to work. A stroll to walk. Okay. Well, I've looked up yeah. on Google the walking distance and time. So it's about a 40 minute drive. Pretty reasonable. That's how However, I according to Google, if you were to no, walk. No, but with traffic. Like. Okay. So you've got, no, not dealing with traffic here. Let me say, if uh, you were to walk from Diamond Creek to our workplace, it would take you five hours and 58 minutes because it's 28.3 kilometers. <laughs> that. Is not a walk. That is a marathon. Well, it's a hike, actually. <laughs> um, so, you, are you gonna are you gonna walk this? You actually think you can walk to work? Yeah, I'll just leave a bit earlier. <laughs> You're gonna have to leave at like four in the morning. That's just a bit earlier. I leave pretty early anyway. <laughs> you heard how I get to work. I have to get like a a car, a train, then a tram. It's not a huge stretch yeah. to just walk it. But Luke, okay, I think it's gonna take more than six hours because the Google Maps doesn't take into account rests. Rest? Yes, you're going to have to stop. You're going to have to stop and eat. State athlete 2013. I don't need rest. <laughs> okay. And also, I walked like a kilometer this morning, yeah. just stopped from here to the station. 28 times that, done. Easy. No, it's completely different. No, it's not. It's for six <laughs> hours. I don't even have walking shoes on uh, right yeah. now. Okay, hang, hang on. Now, if you're actually going to walk to work... I will, I will walk to the You're committing to the listeners now, because this is live. Diamond it's- Creek to South Melbourne. <laughs> Okay, but if you are actually going to walk, doesn't this breach our no training agreement for our race? No, the rule was that it was a brisk walk. So I can I, I can't get over a brisk walk for the month. I'll just briskly walk to work tomorrow. <laughs> Too easy, mate. You're making like this is a big deal. All right, but you better not run. I okay. Won't. You know what? Actually, uh, we got a Facebook message uh, uh, while the songs were playing because your girlfriend's mum is listening. <laughs> She's very... a big fan of the show. Yes. Uh, so we've got a message here from your girlfriend's mum, a bit of a tip for you walking. She said, uh, Luke, take a packed lunch and don't wear new shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Emily. Um, um, so are you going to take that on board? Yeah, I was, yeah, I'll take a pack lunch. There's no way you're going to make this thing, man. You're going to be late to the show. How do we prove that I do walk to work? I'm going to have to get somebody who walks with me. Um, film the whole thing. You have to film the whole thing. What about I don't just, believe that no, you're going to actually What about do one of those GPS watches? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, you've got to wear one of those GPS yeah, trackers. I, got one. I want to see the map of where you walk yeah. by the time you get here. You're, we're not, you're, you're going to ruin Just the show tomorrow. Just around the corner, mate, all right? <laughs> I'll be here. I'll be probably here before you. All right, maybe. All right, how about this? Listeners, give us a call if you have any tips uh, for Luke or if, you, or if you have any methods of, of how we could prove that this thing is real because Luke really does need to do this. All right, so give us a call. Luke, what's the number? one three hundred one six one double o six. Do A, do you think I'll make it? No. <laughs> and uh, yeah, give us a call. one three hundred one six one double o six. Have you got any tips for me walking to work tomorrow? It's a big walk. We'd love to hear your thoughts. I do probably need some help, actually. So. You're insane, mate. <laughs> Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Minor Digital. Just before the song break, Luke made a very big call that he was going to walk to work. Are you regretting that decision? Mm, <laughs> nah. Cause no, because uh, it's gonna be um, gonna be fine. Uh, it's six hours. We Google it. It's a six-hour walk, and we threw it to the listeners. Uh, do you have any tips for Luke? Now we got our first caller, Jordan. What are your tips for Luke? Uh, how is he going to make this? Yeah, good day, guys. How are you going? Yeah, well, how you going, mate? Yeah, going very well, man. Um, my tip is uh, for Lewis to go along the uh, track you guys Google, uh, leaving a trail of donuts. Uh, <laughs> if they're gone, then obviously uh, Chubby's gone for a bit of a walk. <laughs> That is a that's a great idea. Yeah, I think that'll work. What type of donuts? Oh, Krispy Kremes, obviously. Um, <laughs> I'm more of a cinnamon man, Jordan. Um, <laughs> you can get you can get cinnamon from Krispy Kreme. Thank you very much, Jordan. That's a great tip. I'll bring I'll bring some donuts. I'll leave a trail, like, and you, hopefully you'll get to the gingerbread house. You're not going to be walking with me. No, I'll be running circles around you. I might yeah. as well get my training in as well. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we fi- we figured out that it's a six hour world walk, and we've been inundated with messages. You got a couple of texts from people you actually know that also live in Diamond Creek, and uh, how are they feeling? Are they confident uh, that you're going to make this walk? They insist that they go, "Hey, man, Lewis is wrong. We don't live in the country, but there's no way you're going to make it. It's <laughs> six hours. What are you doing?" Yeah. Um, look, I've been known to make big calls in the past, yeah, and 
Usually I back, like, seven out of ten times I'll back them Luke, up. Luke, I'm going to give you the right. rare opportunity. Three out of ten times I back them up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you the rare opportunity to back out of this, because if you do this, I'm honestly worried about tomorrow's show. <laughs> I'll probably get here before you, mate. you don't got nothing to worry about. Okay, so our, our show starts at 12, which means you need to get here at 11, which would mean I think you have to leave at four in the morning. No, it's six hours. Six. Okay, six hours with no breaks. That means that you have no toilet breaks, you have no food, so you're going to have no breakfast, you're just going to walk and just not stop for six hours. Yeah. You're that confident. Yeah, easy. <laughs> Watch me. Well, don't, because you'll be probably doing something better like sleeping or something. <laughs> okay, well, who's going to film this thing? You're going to have to convince somebody else to walk with you. Yeah, I reckon, we'll, uh, I reckon my brother will do it. <laughs> there's, honestly, there's not a lot to do in the country, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, so we'll get your brother Jack to film the walk so we know that you're not lying. He's You'll not going to wear... be happy with you. Oh, look, we'll see. We might have to pay him. Well, I don't know. We'll work it out. We'll see. You're going to wear a GPS tracker yeah. so we can see that you're not lying. And, and... I will briskly walk because I'm not allowed to run. Or That's else right. That, yeah, that, that counts as training. Luke, if you're do. late to tomorrow's show... I don't know what's going to happen, but it's not going to be good. I'll be eating donuts the whole way, and you're gonna, it's going to be great. I'm actually looking forward to it. All right. It's actually, it's pretty, I just checked the weather during this song. It's pretty warm tomorrow. It's really hot. You yeah. don't like walking anyway. No, I hate walking. No. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I went to a shopping center and walked around for 15 minutes. I got so tired, I had to sit in the boyfriend chair. You yeah. know what, like stores, when like this, in those girly stores, I went in with my girlfriend mm. and um, they have the boyfriend chair. We just sit there and me and three other guys just playing iPhone games while yeah. our girlfriend just shops for clothes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, almost, yeah, I'll go in the boyfriend chair even, even when I'm not with my girlfriend. <laughs> Well, you know what, Luke? <laughs> There's definitely going to be no boyfriend chairs on the way because you have not allocated any time for rest. I don't need a rest, mate. It's just <laughs> walking to work. I live down the road, all right? We... All right. Well, we'll find out. We'll Luke find and out Lewis, tomorrow. Luke and Lewis for lunch on AAA Modern Digital. Now, Lewis, yes? are you looking forward to the new Star Wars movie? Oh, yeah. I'm very excited. Big, we're both big Star Wars fans. Yes. Um, who would have thought? <laughs> Two guys uh, who have nothing better to do with their time. But, yes. Uh, yeah, both big Star Wars fans. And... Uh, the trailer's coming out tomorrow. You, you get it? a sneak peek. You must be pretty excited. No, I don't watch trailers. <sighs> See, the <laughs> wait, the new uh, Justice League trailer came out today. You must have seen that. Yeah, I've, I, I, here's, here's my rules with trailers, all right? If it's a movie that I'm definitely going to see, something like Star Wars, Avengers, Justice League, I'm definitely going to see it no matter what the trailer looks like. Mm. I avoid the trailer because I don't want it to be spoiled for me. I'll watch trailers. What is there to spoil? It's a Hollywood film. Oh, are the good guys going to win? Oh, there's going to be big explosions. Like, Yeah, but look, I don't want to know who they're fighting. I don't want to know if they get together. Cause for example, the Justice League trailer was forced upon me. All right? Oh, so you have seen that one? Yeah, I felt violated. I watched it before the show. Yeah, I yeah. went to see a movie, an unrelated movie, and it played before. Wait. I tried to cover my eyes. I wanted to block my ears, but I had to watch the whole trailer. And now I know, all right, as because I've read the comic book that they based the movie on, yeah. now I know what's going to happen. Yeah, because you've read the comic book, not because you've watched the trailer. But my point is, if you actively try and avoid trailers, yeah. how does that situation work in the cinema? Like when you're... The, the previews yeah. before a movie, you pretty much these days can't actively avoid watching movie trailers. Well, look, I, I'm actually pretty good at it, but it is every now and then I do get foiled, and it's only ever by the pre-roll trailers. So sometimes I'll arrive to a cinema like late so that I can skip the ads. And you just, just wait walk outside in. going. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Until that trailer's finished. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want it to be spoiled for me. Like I haven't seen, I've seen about maybe one or two seconds of the Star Wars trailer because they've put $200 million into this yeah. marketing budget and I'm coming out on top. It's pretty hard to ignore a multi-million dollar marketing campaign. It means you can't look at trams, overpasses on freeways and uh, even catalogs. Like even merchandising at stores, it gives away what characters are going to be. It's I know. It's very hard to ignore. Do you just live your life in a little shell? Look, let me a- tell you all of the things that I know about the next Star Wars movie. This is just from literally flashes that I've seen and then close my eyes okay i know that there's lightsabers in it (laughs) very again not a spoiler because it's a star wars film and i know that the that ray is going to be training with luke ray is the main character and she'll be training with luke skywalker another main protagonist again not a huge spoiler considering she just started training at the end of the last one the fact that she may be continuing in the sequel not a big giveaway exactly so i've only seen 
the points that really don't yeah, spoil anything. But I know you're still annoyed that you know that. <laughs> I know it still bothers you every night that you're like, oh, what's the point of even saying it? I already know she's training. Yeah, I really am. But you know what? When you're trying to avoid a $200 million marketing budget, I think I'm, I think I'm doing pretty well, Luke. I mean, when does the movie come out? Uh, December. <sighs> Boxing Day. Or I'm gonna something. I'm gonna ruin it for myself by then. Yeah, of I've, course you are. Because already I've been trying really hard, and they've probably only started ten percent of their marketing. Yeah. Budget. <laughs> they haven't even started TV ads yet. Oh no! Good I... luck. Strap in. <laughs> <laughs> Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Now, Lewis read a uh, article this morning. Oh wow! Yep, long way to, from the sticks uh, <laughs> to the to the big smoke. Yep. So, um, uh, read an article about. Uh, do you take your phone to the toilet with you? Yeah, yeah, that's like part of it's part of the process. Like honestly, at this point, I use my phone in the toilet as often as I use toilet paper. Like it's just, <laughs> it's part of it. <laughs> one for each wipe. So you're like one scroll through Instagram for yeah, exactly. per wipe. Double yeah. tap wipe. Double tap wipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this article is saying bad move these days. Studies have been shown that are very unhygienic, and uh, if you're doing this, pretty much sees immediately. And oh, it is! It is too. I've never thought of that. Of why it's unhygienic? Yeah, because you put that phone to your mouth if you're making a phone call later. Yeah. I think that's the issue. Yeah, you're breathing in your your your, your, your turds. <laughs> I was trying to phrase it um a bit more um radio safe, safe, and but you came uh, up with turds. you're breathing in your own poop, and <laughs> that's uh, it's not hygienic. Your number twos, your stinkers. Yeah, that's all I've got. <laughs> And um, and it got me thinking. Yeah. You have a few other gross habits me? that I've picked up on. Yeah. Me? What do you mean? You're just a big old blob of bacteria. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not a gross person. Yeah, I'm quite. Hy- I'm quite hygienic. When was the last time you washed your jeans? <laughs> uh, I have. I bought these jeans. What would you say? Like a year ago? I asked you when was the last time you washed them, Luke. I bought these jeans a year ago. This is integral to the story. <laughs> they have not been washed. That's disgusting. No, it's not. Do you know how to wash jeans? Yes, you put them in the washing machine. It's not gross at all. Think okay? about how many turds those bad boys are witnessed <laughs> more than your phone. <laughs> Look, Luke, I Googled it. All right, these are Levi's jeans. The CEO of Levi said, never wash your jeans. All right, so all you jeans washers out there, you're ruining your jeans. All right, listen to the Mr. Levi's. Don't wash your jeans ever. That's another you're fashion like one of those tip people from people in Lewis the 1800s Spears. who like... You know those people who, like, they had a bath every year and they're like, oh, time for my yearly bath. It's like, Christmas <laughs> bath, let's do it all at once. Yeah, and now you'll be seeing that style on the runway, all right? Here's all right. Lewis walking down the runway with an unwashed jeans. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh. Ah. Yeah, and that's people holding their nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, you leave half-eaten cereal bowls just all over the joint. Okay, look, now you're just getting into how much time we spend together. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, you leave half-eaten cereal bowls, which you then return to and might have a bit of a nibble on an hour later. Look, what's leave? Leave or, leave or just, I'm um, still going? Well, <laughs> I don't know. When does it become, oh, I'm done with that too? Like, you'll often leave for an hour and be like, oh, I still haven't finished my cereal. We'll keep going at that. Okay, often I'll just forget about food. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you that, and then I'll be like, oh, All right. I'm going to do something else. And the last one, your phone case yes. looks like a Petri dish full yes. of bacteria. Oh, it's yeah, it does. actually got mold in it. It's disgusting. Oh, yeah. Michael, your, have you seen my phone case? He's harvesting no, human, or oh, not yeah. human life, he's harvesting life forms have a in look his phone case. And my phone case. He's just showing just it to Michael now. You think. Oh, you, I don't even want to touch that. Can yeah, see, don't. That, can you see those bumps? And that's not dirt. That's mold. That's oh, alive. Yuck, take it off. And please. you just said at the start of this break you were hygienic. <laughs> just threw it at him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. That's that's the end of the show. Yeah, we've right. proved Lewis is a dirty boy, uh, and, and Michael is terrified of my focus. <laughs> But uh, Luke, you are going to be walking to work tomorrow. How Absolutely. are you feeling? Absolutely, still confident. If you look okay, if you miss the show. You have to admit that you live in the country, and I want to hear an audio diary <laughs> of your life in the country. But if I make it, voice. we yeah. get an audio diary of me living in the big smoke, which okay. is true. That's the agreement. I live just around, just, just down the road, mate. Le- okay. Round the corner. Okay. Round Up the, cor- the street. I'm trying to think of as many Six ways. Six-hour walk around the corner, all right? Yeah. We'll see if you make it to work tomorrow. Tune in to uh, what will be tomorrow, Just Lewis. I'll be here at 12... Uh, on your radio, talking about how much exhausted of a cruise... you are. Nah, <laughs> I'll be talking about my brisk stroll into work. All right, Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. We'll see you tomorrow.